church. I just want to get All right, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you um, for this opportunity to be here, Lord, and to um, meet with these men and women to make some decisions for our county, Lord. I ask that you would give us wisdom. Um, I pray that you would continue to be with our um, police um, around our county as um, they... <laughs> and just be with them and protect them, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> I I'm normally fine with it. I feel like Steve. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you better check. That might be from out of the area. <laughs> <laughs> it might, might be somebody upstairs calling. Yeah. All right. Um, real quick. Uh, thank you, Master Drew. You stand there. Uh, thanks, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, first thing is public. We'll do it. We'll go along with those in. And we're ready to roll. Um, Dave, do you have anything you want to explain before we get started? Um, the only thing I would ask, like on the fire departments, was that um, any of the hats off file their 990 was one from the thing of last year where we took the, you know, where it says a rural fire protection appropriation is going to be specified to be the additional thing. And um, one of the ladies in David's office actually called her yesterday and said that she wants to meet him. Yeah, she wants to meet him. They're around location and I believe they have 990. We know at least one at Doug at this point and there's a couple others that we have. Let's check Lyle. He is, and he's here today. He'll talk to you. Okay. Brian, and that's what I might say. Just take them so we can't appropriate if somebody doesn't qualify for the non-profit. They just go there to the rule of our position, and then they straighten it out, come back to the commission, appropriate it from there, and then transfer and advertise it. And we'll back on. I got you. I just budgeted it and then transfer it. Revolution later. All right. All right. And um, real quick for elections, I just want to clarify and make sure because we have a lot going on. With them, uh, when they asked to move from part time to a full time, I explained to them that they were going to lose the difference in salary because we weren't letting people hire new people. But if she wanted to change a part time to a full time, was willing to give up other positions, that was fine. Annette said, Absolutely, do whatever you need to to get that done. So I asked the man to pull the difference out. They also had that employee starting, they had mentioned 42, but that's outside what their pay study and everything else said, which should be the starting point is 33. I would put it at 33 if it comes back as I'm the one that said, excuse me, said we need to do that. So that employee's going to start at 33. David's also going to adjust and take out program time and other things that need to be done related to that move on their part. And again, that was at their request. So. And we'll do that. And we're trying to get Chief Miller to try to deal with that way to get the final budget. The last meeting today is at 10. 10-10, and we'll talk to Chief Miller. He can come if you want to talk to him again. He's going to say the main thing is the details were pretty close, but we should both sit here on the spot. And and that's like a 20-minute recess and finish it up that you get the final budget. Yeah, and I talked to him yesterday. He reiterated again the only people he wants to give that additional money to are people that are in the field on the So, not administration. He's, and there's three uh, supervisors we have that still ride an ambulance. They call it that. So, get that. And, um,
on part of the time. I only have their own set of boards. Yeah, especially when you mentioned the 
Brandon said Ricky owns it. Brandon said it was Ricky's. So see, I can show up. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just said, I'm like, oh, who knows? It was. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, they went up there as kids. It was a year ago when I went up there, yeah. But. <laughs> I think most people are going to do it anyway. I understand it. I like getting to it. Some of us call him easy. <laughs> yeah, well, I said, well, my name is Charles Alexander. I'm the director of the Tennessee Small Business Administration right down the road at Ball State Community College, which taking a look at folks is our state owned reform for our last year's work. I say our lot, our still me. Uh, however, to remind you what we, what I do is free one-on-one -on -one business advising for anybody that owns a business or wants to start a business uh, right here in Sumner and a couple of surrounding counties, uh, as well as hosting or teaching small business workshops. So the information I gave you there shows you last year's results, how many clients we met with, which which is 170, had 15 business starts, uh, almost $3.5 million of capital formation, and uh, lots of business, uh, lots of jobs created and retained. Uh, so we are here to request funds for uh, matching dollars. The SBA gives us some money, but all the request is that I match that money with non-federal dollars. And, uh, that comes from a variety of places, obviously county government, city government, uh, economic development agencies, Ball State gives us a few dollars finally after 12 years. Uh, real money, not just any kind of indirect, turning right. hard wheel. Bank, okay. utility districts, brother, we're spread all over the place. Uh, and as you can imagine, this uh, service is needed more than ever. Even though all of our my advising is confidential, I got a few folks to let me brag on them that uh, I will you know, say that they got to work with us to grow this business. I really didn't hit off any questions at the past. Obviously, I'm still not obviously. I'm still working from home, but I've worked more hours and harder for the last three months than I probably ever have in the previous 13 years I've been there. And we're, you know, I don't not that you're asking, but it, it, it's uh it, this will be a long road to uh, recovery, even though things are starting to open back up and people will start spending money. As everybody in here knows way better than me, it would be a year or two uh, to kind of get back to where we were. So the services that we have are, uh, they're just, just what Brian, you know, we're not going to say who or what, but if there's a shelf facility that replaces an empty Kroger, uh, that's not, <laughs> not saying who or what. Yeah, but that's a, I just want to say, because we do see your work every day. So thank you very much for what you do. Anybody have any questions for Going on. Is there any common denominators that you're seeing right now with a lot of the businesses that are coming to you for past health care? It went in phases. Uh, like March 17th to the 31st was a blur when SBA said, hey, we got money. And we gave different information on how you obtain it every single day. Uh, so morning, noon, night, get that straight up. The next two weeks was this is how we apply it. The next two weeks was when am I going to get it? And the next two weeks was, hey, I got it, but now what do I do with it? I'm afraid to use it. Uh, so now we're in the phase of trying to work with people to uh, figure out you know, who got money, uh, what they should be doing with it, what they need to do to take in steps of reopening. Uh, glad you asked that because I almost forgot. Uh, the SBA has set aside additional grant dollars. Not matching grant dollars. They have told us repeatedly they cannot be used in the operational funds 
uh, but that could be used to help outsource some of our services to literally the CPA, the marketing firms, and HR consultants, people with key areas of emphasis. So the two big things that people want to know right now, first and foremost, is what does PPP forgiveness truly require? But it, I'm guessing and having if that can looks like it's getting kicked all the way out to October. If that does, then it's not required that people prove that they use the money in two months of lab to October, and I think that'll alleviate a lot of concerns. The other one is I need to market more and I need to rehire. So I'm right now coordinating with those dollars to outsource a lot of this stuff to CPAs and marketing firms and HR folks to work with them on a one on one basis and a, a time frame and a skill set that I just won't be able to commit to. So that, I don't know if that answers your question. Some of these issues changed in one month. We got like March uh, development pathways for historic low unemployment rates 2.6 in March. One month, April's historic high unemployment rates 14.8 percent. Back to the Great Recession, the highest we've ever recorded in Southern County was in June of 2010, which is technically a couple years after the recession, at 10.8 percent. So we got quite a challenge in the whole workforce. Arena. But the idea of the core alignment of education with the high demand, high skill, high wage job, that didn't change. Fortunately, what's going to change is going to be less of those jobs available. So, so the competition will be greater. But that puts the onus on us to uh, 
help you know in the workforce arena as Forest Center is in fact an economic and workforce development organization. Now one of the things we're working on, particularly on that grant, we're doing a uh, template uh, that's going to provide to the local economic development officials a systematic uh, approach to the to the pathway and the information that they need when they're working with prospects. And then also we're we're going to do a scan of the universe a universe system scan, which means all the local nonprofits that are uh, do, doing or offering workforce development services. And obviously, as you can see, that works very timely and critical because this is the time to be working together and collaborating and not anticipating other work. So this all the things that, that will happen. So in that idea, the future of work skill set is still going to require the education uh, to be adaptable, adaptive and flexible with a heavy dose of work-based learning. Options. I will say that just we just finished up in the school system. Applied, I put a grant together for two hundred thousand dollars for machine technology, both for machines, instruments, and tools, to develop a, a, a new uh, certified pathway. Uh, that grant was what we did is we sourced the uh, support letters from the uh, industry, and we also uh, got the commitments from the Institute of Work Based Learning for the high school students. So. I think that grant was just submitted on a month. Uh, Westmoreland right now. Westmoreland right now. Westmoreland, yes. Machine and technology, but because if they get that grant, they'll be able to use some of their other school funds to help out some high school and put it forward. And, uh, be honest. So that's my snapshot on workforce development. I got a lot of other things. But, but the point I'm trying to make is, you know, Jimmy helped us with that grant, with this other grant, and that's what we've done. You guys have done a good job with the start of the PCAP school in Portland. We tied our K-12 with the state as far as middle college. Of course, Paul started the scholarship that later the governor of the state of Tennessee took over. That was really the seed idea. And so we're well ahead of a lot of communities, and right now it's going to pay dividends. We've got a new career center that where Jimmy's located over here on Greenleaf, and so we're connecting the TCAP school, Ball State, public education with that, and then adult education, and then since they reconnect with these people going back and uh, getting their certifications in different fields. So, you know. We, we had come to the conclusion, we said, well, is this going to work because unemployment is so low in Sumner County? I think we were the fourth lowest in the entire state. And then, bam, this happened, so you never know. So our timing couldn't have been better. So I just I, I want you to know, because a lot of times people look at board Sumner and like, well, what do they do? Economic development. Of course, he's worked with Fenton. He's worked with Denise on projects, worked in Portland, uh, uh, Westmoreland with um, the uh, lumber company up there. But, but, supply and yeah. supply, yeah. but, but the thing is, you know, that's what it takes. You've got to coordinate your activity and kind of tie it all together. And I think that's what Ford Summer does well. So I'm like, look for the sales yeah. pitch for Ford Summer, yeah. but it's really a valuable tool for us. I'm Good glasses and haircut. I mean, <laughs> if you want to go out in Halloween, you can be George Washington. <laughs> 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 we're uh, the LSU. What is the latest on Northeast Corridor? Northeast Corridor will have a report on June eighteenth. Uh, Freshman Smith is reported in to uh, cheat out right now as we speak. So. The idea is expanding from four lanes to six lanes with an additional potential express lane or bus on shoulder. I stand here and tell you, I'm the county mayor, which I have to tell you too, that express lane was a long shot anyway. Well, I think probably happened, that happened. But all this happened, and now the state revenues are shot. So what we're going to get is we're going to get six lanes with right. bus on shoulder. Yeah. That's what we're going to get. Because we almost got an eight lane which would have been a hot lane to actually be to use. It's not really a toll road, but what you do, you use it for transit, 
buses, whatever. And then if you wanted to use that lane personally, it would be metered and you'd pay for it. And it would be based on uh, traffic counts at the time. In other words, peak traffic, you pay more, lower traffic has to pay less. But they're not going to build that now because the revenues are shot. This is this is pretty much stuck in here. Well, the state the state is looking for the possibility of a public private investment. But now that's not going to They would hire someone to run the express lane. Right. But they're restricted on what that can be charged. So the best that an operator on an express lane gets you is the covering the cost of running it. Not not to, it, it won't have any money towards the construction. I can, I can tell you we were that close. And I, you know, if they'd come out earlier, we'd have got it set in stone, we'd been fine. But when this hit and it just hammered the uh, fuel taxes across the state, it's been not going to be great. What about the Dante importers? Because they're going to build. And, well, I know, and you know, I know everybody in this area is, thinks about 386 all the time, the old lady. But, but that end is the gateway to Interstate 65. Oh, yeah. And, it's, it's going to happen. Girl. Here's the difference, Billy. That's done. They're, they're going to get ain't done either. <laughs> I, I disagree. I know Mike Dallas gets upset, but they're, they're buying the right of ways. They've got an engineer. They've got to fund it. Will I live that long? Maybe not. How long did it take to get one on that? A long time. They're, they're going to build, but you know, you got to lay that at the feet of the political system too, because remember, the bypass would have been built from the very beginning, but people didn't want the bypass. They wanted to go through downtown. They don't want to bypass down. Once it gets built and it goes four lane through downtown Portland, they don't want it four lane through downtown Portland. They want a bypass. Yeah, and so, well, that's like 386. Yeah. When, when, when my idea was to be in on that one, which was just 30 years ago. It seems right. like yeah, you know, right. a long time ago, there were politicians going, no one will ever drive that far out of the country. Right. So, my recommendation is to recommend that my report starts with the finished uh, bypass so, uh, under community development infrastructure. So that's critical. The right of way acquisition will start this summer. I don't think there'll be any budget impacts on that. As you know, that's split in two, two sections, so it's going to take a few years. But, uh, Chugging along, and it's a priority of the park. Yeah. And then the net quarter to your point, Mr. Bue, is the idea that time to quit studying wherever we're going to get. It needs to go to, it needs to go to environmental. Well, that's why I'm asking you. We keep hearing that we're going to infrastructure, yeah. and so is there, is there a, even a ballpark year on breaking ground? Yeah, I would say four years is in a perfect world. Yeah, on the first phase. Yeah, yeah, five first years, phase. Yeah. 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 The reality is they can. The design that they're going to do, and that's why I'm pushing to get out of study, because the design they're going to do is going to allow you to do an express lane. The problem would be right now, the express lane is not technically legal because the way you would enforce it is you would uh, use electronic monitoring, and that's not available. If you build a road, you can, you can put that in place when you build a road. If the road's already there and then you try to convert it to an express lane, that becomes a different dynamic. With, with time. So, but but we're, we're in good position, and Jimmy's worked really hard because we're going to get 386 widened. It's going to include an element of transit, and 109 bypass is going to be done. The, the key right now, and of course it's under construction, is the Wilson County side. I mean, you can say anything you want. That has a bigger effect on Sumner County than it does Wilson County. That's crazy, but it's true. We've got 350 million summer country, 350 million in, in, in improvements. Okay. Not all is in a budget impact. One of our jobs is to get the next 350 million in the, through the planning process, in the uh, approvals, and then to the budget, which is continuation of the expansion of the 386. Have you heard any more about widening uh, 65? From the Kentucky line. Yes, sir. They got they broke it up into four uh, four segments, and all those four segments are have been bid out for, uh, and I think it came to four different contractors. So 
coming. Thomas Rowe, 97. Here at 120 now, so uh, 23 yeah. hours. So it probably did about, you know, that's about five miles. You're going from Thomas Rowe to White House, Essex. White House, but it's that exit right there first, which is before you get to the high school. 104. What is it? Uh, Double Road. Double Road, yeah. yeah. That's the first thing. Is that the end of the first day? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> So, and, and that's part of what we did to use our political capital here to work on I-65 because we knew I-65 had to happen and the department was going to do that. So that's all in the pre So they're moving ahead. Billy, to answer your question, I don't want to be negative. Justin is probably the only one to run the see all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will tell you this. We and me. We're and very me. <laughs> I, I want you to understand out of all this region, I worked hard on it. Hayes Brown worked hard on it. And we're in leadership. We have received, by the time it's over, it'll be well over a billion dollars that'll be spent right here in Summer County. And that is well above any of the surrounding counties as far as what they've committed to do. When you say that's safe, safe to say, Jimmy? Yes, absolutely. And a very good relationship with T Dot. Right now, I mean, part of the trick is we speak with one voice and a united voice. And all the cities are part of Forest Army, and when we get when we approach TDOT, we approach them as at one voice in one county, and that's been very, very effective. They, they very much appreciate it. The minister, the new minister, was up here in January at the Forest Army meeting, very complimentary. As a matter of fact, he uses he uses excuse me, Southern County as one of two examples in the state of, of, of easy to work with. And, Right approach in Sumner County and Superior County, just to give the examples he used. So, I know it's Sumner County, but that last four mile stretch from one of our bridges in Wilson County, is there a timeline on that? Do you know? Yeah, I think that was supposed to be done by the end of this year, and then certainly in the spring, once I'm hanging that up, it was a relocation of utility, which often happens in projects. I mean, you do go on part of the new road now. <laughs> so. I want to be the message to see Kevin Corbin. I want to make sure he gets a chance to visit the end with his wife and her folks and all the work that they did. You know, I just can't see Kevin Corbin. So, thank you. They made that really extremely, really going. I mean, the parking lot was multiple. You know, really, they was even parked on the football field up there in Hill Island. I was there like two weeks before. They finally started back some at least. Can I come? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I might give you my phone. Yeah, I need it. Sure. Anything else? Uh, anybody have anything else for our team? Thank you very much. Sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, and I, but I think you're wondering about what you're going to talk to yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they didn't give me any direction. Yeah, I, 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 I apologize. Yeah. That would really help people do that. And, and <laughs> My history with the fire department, you know, sometimes out of my pocket and a hell of a lot of drugs. I can only do so much. All you guys are a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Rawls from the Big Chattanooga. We appreciate everyone y'all done for us. And we understand to do this. <laughs> We're good with that. Y'all have been very kind to us. Um, you know, several years ago, I'll give you an update real quick. Y'all gave us a $750,000 building, and it's just incredible. We appreciate that. Uh, within the last year, the ambulance service moved in, which has been wonderful. Uh, and we appreciate that. The community appreciates that. Um, you folks let us buy a an air cascade system this year, and hopefully a generator. Uh, we've had the I, I got two committees. One did the air uh, cascade system, which is the quality air that emergency responders have to have to breathe and uh, we bought one that can fill up the whole county so it's a it's a really really good thing and we think that's important and we certainly share with all the others including Hendersonville, Gallatin, and Portland and Milledgeville. Uh, we'll share with anybody Hillettsville. Um, now we're to the generator. Um, my generator committee just got a little generator <laughs> and that's not what I want. I want a big generator. Uh, not asking for anything, just telling y'all. We want a big generator to completely run the station, and then if we have to provide services for the community, we want them to be able to plug in uh, ventilators or whatever, you know, whatever happens. So we want it to be a public service building, and we need a big generator. Um, what? So I'm in a pinch right now. I've got 30 days to buy a generator, and I had to read up real quick about two weeks ago to get the bigger one. So we're working on that at 90 miles an hour. We're going to pay the difference. And we appreciate the money that y'all allotted to us, but we're worried about our 30 days. And I talked with the finance department a little bit, but yeah, okay, so they approved the twelve thousand dollar generator. Was there any stipulations other than it being a generator? Mm -hmm. So, so, so it'll be fine then. Yeah, I'll just say a generator and you get us an email and you purchase it trying to finish it. Are you, are you going to talk about his nonprofit yeah. status? Yes, they're, they're, they ran into that and this is what yeah. we discussed yeah. earlier. Yeah. Talk about it. Me and him talked about it and they're going to talk to their accountant. Uh, my understanding at least look at it, the only people that we can donate to would be a 501d3 or a 501d1 time. But what he's saying is we're going to appropriate the money. Yeah, it's going to be hell until you get that straight down. Me and him are talking about I, I was ignorant to this. You know, we're tax, uh, Tennessee, we're tax exempt. And I got tax exempt and confused with my problem. <laughs> and I apologize, but I will fix it then. I'll, I'll we just want to make sure you're aware. Yeah. They're going to try to appropriate the money, but you know, they can't appropriate it directly to your no, station. Until you get the status so they can move around. Was the generator out of the last year's? Okay. And the last thing on the generator, I just want to make y'all know where I'm doing this in a good way. We're doing a dual fuel, which is going to be natural gas from we've got the gas line, and then we're going to do LP gas as a backup. So we've got the redundancy, like EMA and like the metal ones here. So the generator should be able to run half a shackle island down there when we get it in. And I just I, we're, I'm looking at 44,000. 
because it's I know, a four hundred forty thousand. I get it. That was like a it's really a big thing, check. But, <laughs> but you know, you, the guys there were like, "Oh, we got to really open the garage doors and turn the lights on." I'm like, "That's not what I want. <laughs> I want to run the whole station plus." You know, we because you know we could have folks coming in. You know, we, we didn't know what was going to happen fifty days ago. We could have had a little mini hospital in Shackleton, but, but with no generator. So I think this is an important future thing. It's becoming a community uh, access point for emergencies. Well, I Steve, I just want to commend you guys. Y'all do a great job at that fire department of allowing the community to use that building. You can go by there during homecoming week. There's tons of kids from Beach over there. There's always people in the community at your building. And so you guys do a really good job of incorporating that. So. Service. I think Ms. Kruger is they wanted them to send invoices down for what was approved for emergency services. So this is something the emergency services didn't approve as far as the Is it toward whatever they approved this month? Yeah. It's less than the money. We, we bought the two pieces of equipment. We've got 492 or 96. That's what I'm saying. They approved the money. Why don't we take it? I can buy a new nozzle for $500. And that's that's what I'm wondering. Well, at least since it's like toward the end of the year, and emergency services actually approved the listing. That's why I was asking about the generator. I think it was specific items on it. Yeah. So why don't we show in our budget, which we have all that being spent, and then send it back to emergency services and let them. And then you can. You guys can approve and put it in the budget. Yeah. Absolutely. 492 for the five hundred dollars. Okay. Don't conflict with emergency services. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll email Caroline. And let her know that they're stopping with their budget approved it. To make it official, we put it on the 15th agenda because it's outside the call discussion. But since you guys said it was okay, we'll tell them to run and then we'll put it on the budget. They had to list every item that they purchased. Yeah. Hey, Chief. How much is the nozzle? $500. $492. Hey, Chief, is that fire station always in? Is that fire station always manned? Was, was somebody there um, for the wreck the other day? Uh, with yeah. exactly right in front of y'all with the forerunner and the truck. Was somebody at the station when that happened? No. Yeah, I. Yeah, I knew y'all responded pretty quick. I just wasn't sure if that. I, I couldn't remember if that was manned all the time. I didn't think it was. Okay. <laughs> are, are we going to be able to look at some a different funding method next year? She might actually get, um, if you don't care, I'll tell you exactly in that table we're trying to do this, something different. That might be a little bit better for everybody. Yeah, if you could do that, yeah. we're going to have a chief's meeting next week. I'll be out there for a little bit. I'll do more on that. I'll probably soon get out there. That's all. Unless anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. No, thank you, sir. Okay. We're going to keep funding for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm terrible. You know, I'm awful down. I didn't recognize it. Yeah, you would recognize it. He's the one that ran. I don't know. 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 He's maybe 16. He's probably just 16. But it's. Yeah, sir. I think Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, that'd be all fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a case of this. Share that with you. 
Yeah, so I'm a board member. I'll, I'll be very brief, but I didn't want to take up the length very often. I'll, I'll be just 30, 45 seconds. Um, my name is Taylor Walker. I've been on the board here now for, gosh, going on three years, you know, time moves quick. Uh, but if I'm, I'm sitting on your side of the table, you're a college and a lot of good folks here today, and my question will be, well, why should I support, right? That's what I would think if I, if I was you. And there are really two, two reasons that I came up with. Um, since I've been involved with this, we, we have really changed a lot of things. We have gotten, we've got great leadership. You can hear Ryan, we, you know, we, we're putting together things. We've got the best board, and I've got to be careful saying that. We've always had great boards. We really had a forward-thinking board that's willing to do some different things. Uh, so the leadership is in the place where it should be, you know, that's key with any group like this. We, we are a group that's got a lot of old real estate and not a lot of liquidity. But we have a very unique opportunity, I believe, to serve all of Sumner County. I really do. When I got involved, I'm like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm a banker. Look at the balance sheet. I'm like, wow. You know, as you get into it further, you realize there is a great opportunity. We feel a lot of responsibility because Mr. Garrett left us his, his real estate over there in Gallup. Uh, but it's not the Gallup Museum, it is the Sumner County Museum. And that is something we're continuing continually focusing on. So I do believe we have a very unique opportunity to put something special together here. So uh, two, the two things I want to share. And so I'm Barry McConnell. I'm the chair for the accounting museum. And just to kind of echo what they said and keep it short, uh, sustainability is a key. We need a little bit of assistance to, to get to that point before we become self-supported. Um, a lot of old properties need a lot of maintenance, obviously. And so, again, that's one of the reasons that we're here um, this is a county museum. Uh, some of the kind of mystique uh, from some people in the county is, well, this is the Gallup Museum. This is the county museum. A lot of rich history, and that history is ongoing. This isn't things that are just in the past. It's happening today, and Brian is doing a great job in capturing some of the things, even with COVID-19. Uh, there's some projects that he's working on that the county will be able to see years down the road what happened in our county during that time. So, again, this is an ongoing uh, historical thing that you're doing. So just would appreciate you guys. I just want to comment that um, I, I've talked to Ryan and, and other members sometimes we've been with Taylor uh, over the course of the last several months. Um, and I do, I, I wanted, I, I did not, I encourage them to come this year under original propositions of how we were going to start looking at nonprofits. We've really re um, engineered how we try to handle nonprofit requests. Um, I, I did caution Ryan that obviously this is a tough year to come in with a brand new request. Um, and we know that, you know, we're going with a zero growth budget. Um, I'm glad they're still here. And I do think that one of the things that's important is just, um, I think that this has been an oversight. And I do think there was a miscommunication because I think John Garrett came here maybe in 2013, 14, 15, whatever that year was, to request money to help purchase the carriage house, if I'm not mistaken. Is that that about right that was maybe a fifty thousand dollar allocation and he was asking specifically for money to, to purchase that carriage house and it left the impression that that's all we ever needed you know we just need that one we need a contribution from the county to get over that home to get that piece of uh, property and i think beyond that there's been been that that's been the hangover effect that that's that's all they ever needed but this really is a summer county asset um, and as far as operational costs, just like any of the other nonprofits that are coming to talk to us, you know, they just need help to function and to serve the community. And so I do think that it's, um, I think it's been an oversight. I think there's been some misunderstanding about the, the, the funding arrangement. And I do think that um, coupled with all of that, it's, you know, it's almost an embarrassment. Um, if, if you look at Gallatin, who's the city where this happens to reside, they have been funding the, the museum at about $20,000 a year for the last many years. Um, this year might be a little bit different. I don't know if you've gotten Gallatin's numbers. I know that they're going to try to get them close to that number again. So as the entity Sumner County, and we have a Sumner County Museum, I just, I think there was a, there was a mis misunderstanding. And I, and so I think that it's really valuable for you being here. So thank you for helping so us educate. Yeah, just go back to your head. So, um, you know, this is a nonprofit civic organization. Uh, you're a 501c3 or 501c6? You are a 501c3. Um, so I don't, and I don't know exactly the legal description of a 501c6 versus a 501c3. 
um, I would typically categorize the museum as not necessarily a charitable organization like the ones that we're planning to handle in the fall. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I but, just like to say, just for the first time though, we let them go through the process. Yeah. And then that way, because we know we're not going to do it here, but it's obvious, like you said, there's a need and probably a need for us to support. So if everybody's comfortable, we want to ask them that we'll put them through for the, the new process and let me include in that. Let me explain that too. So when we kind of, we kind of redesign how we handle nonprofits, um, there are, there's a variety of different ones. Uh, Jimmy Johnson was just here. It's a nonprofit entity. So any contributions that we allocate towards a nonprofit, you know, have to be designated as such. But certain ones are economic development or civic in nature, or maybe an extension of our government responsibility. Um, and so those are going to be handled and allocated during our standard allocation process, our, our budget that we try to set by the end of June to start uh, our fiscal year, July 1st. As part of this budget setting process for charitable nonprofits, we are going to embark using a more of a, a separate allocation committee to look at all the nonprofits, to really look at in detail at the grant request. And we are going to, out of this process, setting our annual budget, allocate a portion of money, a pool of money, to allocate towards our nonprofits. And we are going to then review those grants um, once our budget is approved. So ideally, this will get approved by the county um, by the end of June. It'll start, and then that budget will start July 1st. And then now, going back a couple months, and I don't know if we have those. We, we had set them. They're out on the website as to when we were going to run that allocation cycle in the fall. Um, and so the recommendation, and I, and I don't disagree, because you are a new nonprofit that we haven't funded in the past in this budget cycle is you know to find money for a new nonprofit to be uh, irresponsible especially with what we're telling all of our departments in terms of the funding levels but as we come out of this and we set pool of money for nonprofits we can at that point look at your grant as part of all of the, non the nonprofits that we have that make sense yeah. I just ran by it No employees and no wages. Uh, we're trying to maintain the current level of service. So typically, and I've been here a while, nonprofits come once or twice, making their case for the extra funding. So we've got a long list of people lined up. And so they tell me if I'm on the off key. Typically, you kind of get in the hopper, explain what you're going to do, how you're going to get the money. Uh, it looks like this crowd's pretty favorable for funding it. So this is an exceptionally challenged year. In addition to that, um, it typically takes a couple of cycles to get in to the funding mechanism just because we've got so many people waiting. Plus, it would be extremely difficult for a commissioner to look all these employees in the face and say, We're going to fund a new nonprofit, but yet we're not going to uh, give you the grades this year. So it's just a tough year. But I can tell you this, I support it then, I support it now. It's a museum, history, it's a very important part of our county. And as you well know, we're one of the original counties. That's Davidson County. I mean, we were, we were here even before the state was here. So I appreciate what you're doing, and I think it's um, super valuable. To have that museum, and I just want to thank not only what you do, but I want to thank John Garrett. Hopefully, he's listening to all of us, but his contribution to this would never have happened. So I think he supplied probably 90% of the artifacts and probably 100% of the building funding to some extent. So, I'd like to just say, Guys, before you guys leave, I just want to say to this is the I've seen um, Ryan you present a couple different times here at the budget committee for different you know requests or whatever, and this is the first time that I've ever heard, and maybe it's always been a plan, but the first time I've heard a plan for sustainability, and as part of the funding source, that makes me really happy to hear that that is your goal is to you know continue that and so for again I'm speaking for one of 24 that encourages me to help because I know you have a plan set up to become self 
self-efficient, self-sustaining um, in the museum. I love the idea of hosting things out of the home, whether you allow the public to rent that, cater it for weddings, receptions, the sky's the limit on things like that in our county, especially when you have a home of this kind of magnitude that you can do that. So I would love to encourage and to see you guys continue with that plan, present that plan in order to help the other commissioners understand this is not going to you know, be the end all that we're gonna constantly be asking for money every year, but here's our laid out 10 year plan of where we wanna be and what that looks like. Because I love having the community even with the distillery in the buildings, however we gotta get them in there, if we can't get them in there just for the museum, let's pull a distillery in and get them in that way. Whatever we can do to get people in these buildings, I love that idea and I love that plan. So congratulations on that and continue to to help with that so we can see it. I just wanna add, you know, and I do, and then to Commissioner, um, I, it, it does seem like it's a summer county project. I, I hope this is something, because we're in the process, I know y'all know this, of changing the county, but especially downtown Gallatin for the next hundred years. Um, and so hopefully what in, in this COVID year, it might not be the perfect year. And I'm just gonna throw this out there, Michelle might throw a bottle at me or something, but um, you know, in the coming, in the near future, in four to five years, the old courthouse, there might, might be an office or a building in there that might be beneficial to incorporate a square area for the museum because we got to do something with it. Again, we haven't figured that out. And I'm speaking again from 1 to 24. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, Leah, draw it up. No, I'm just kidding. That's something to think about for the future, too. Uh, as y'all are looking at this footprint, it's all right there in a walking campus, uh, so to speak. And, and I'm assuming if you need uh, uh, pictures for the distillery, Mr. Holt's great grandfather, I'm sure that's somewhere in this county. I really like uh, the location. I know a lot of times uh, the historical thing, we don't get to choose the location, of course. But it is downtown, and as we talk about, you know, we talk about walkable downtowns all the time, and if we ever get visitors coming back, which I know some still do, uh, and it works hand in hand with tourism, um, and anything that helps, you know, I think it's a big help this museum and all this together, to the city of Gallatin, but I also think whatever the Whatever it is, if it's in Gallatin or Portland or Hendersonville, if it helps those cities, then it helps the county too, and it's all tied together. And, and uh, I, I really like this. And one other quick thing, I know we've talked about this in the past. Um, maybe it's been a couple of years. About what's the one in Hendersonville, the historic home in Hendersonville on the lake? Rock Castle. Rock Castle yeah. does um, in conjunction with our school department. I think every third or fourth grader in the county goes there and so we had talked about one time even putting the museum in a grade whatever grade that does for a county-wide field trip where they went to the museum you know went to some different historical places um, in our county and again we would love to see you guys try to partner with the school system and set that up to get our school kids in there because what that does is again they go home and tell mom and dad hey there's this really cool you know and because we have visited that home with no intentions of ever even knowing it was back there until my kids went there on a field trip. Um, <laughs> no, it's not listen to Chris, as I have a senior. <laughs> we talked about it. I wish we could do it. You know, they got Johnny Walker Red and Johnny Walker Black, and I think you may be related one, Taylor Walker Orange. Orange. <laughs> I mean, it's just, just a thought. Just a thought. I mean, you know, it, it's probably a best thing. It's not a best kind of best thing to have an orange. In all seriousness, we, we, I think everybody in the room fully supports what y'all are doing, and especially the way you present it this year and just the approach you're having. I think everyone's saying, hey, it's a great idea. And what I'm going to ask you is if we, because if we want you to go through again, you don't have to. You don't have I to write anything again. But. What we're going to do is we'll put you through the new with the, the new way we're doing it. 
because that that is an avenue where we could do some different things and try to help you. But more importantly, I think it's fantastic what y'all are doing. And if there's some way we can help advertise it for you, especially, I mean, we're joking about the facility, but those are all fantastic ideas to try and make use of that space. Like, and I think what Melissa said is a big one. We have a few contacts with the school, so we could probably help you on that. Way. And I think aside from just the monetary assistance that I know you need, there's some, some things we could certainly help you do also that we'd be glad to, especially with the way you've got everything presented, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, yeah, absolutely, go right ahead, sir. Just to echo in what you know, I, I, I'm just taking the barrel to see, I think it's third grade or fourth grade, but yeah, they're all over Hendersonville. They, they get the buses, they get approved by parents and all that stuff, and take spend a day. I mean, it's, I think it's a whole day yeah. in Rock Castle. Mm -hmm. And the parents in the school, they become love it. And, and, we, and I know they do that in conjunction with uh, uh, Compass okay. that uh, helps uh, work with schools to uh, orchestrate all that. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's awesome. I know with my kids in school, you had to sign up, and there was only so many limited parents, just space-wise. And it was always a treat to get to attend that event. Um, and so I might have yeah, went under commissioner because I didn't. Taylor, whoever y'all call, call me, come on, come on the board. Uh, and I know you can get with Dr. Phillips easily. Uh, and, and that would be cool to have Gallatin yeah. kids going to a Gallatin meeting. Or Summer County meeting. Yeah. We're here to help you guys any way we can, even though, unfortunately, you know, we're not sure monetarily what it looks like this year. But please don't think if we can't fund you at 100% this year that that means we're not willing to help because we most certainly are. And any connections we can help you guys make or anything that we can do as a body, we would love to see this museum take off. Like I'm sure you guys have it in your vision. Uh, we'll see what we can do that. We just want to start conversations again. We, we think we have something really unique that we can offer the entire facility. And it's just exciting to do a different place. We know history looks different, right? People just don't walk through the museum. It has to be an experience. So. Uh, and be thinking about what we can do for the county as well. So yeah. it's it's a two way street here. So we'll make sure that that's out there. So be thinking about how we can help some get out and spend money. Absolutely. Attention to reschedule the uh, the battle. Yeah. 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 Yeah.